me set the scene for you uh, this morning. Jesus had gone down to the river where John was baptizing, and John, he came down and asked John to baptize him. John said, you need to baptize me. And Jesus says, no, let this be this way. John baptizes him, and uh, the, the Spirit of God comes down upon him like, like a dove. And then the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness. Chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to them, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil left him, and angels came and waited on him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Open our hearts, O Heavenly Father, to hear you. In the name of Christ, amen. The first Sunday of Lent is usually the time when we talk about the temptation of Christ. And I'm an expert on temptation. I can tell you all about it. And I bet you can too, and you probably have a different view from me. And Now, what I thought we would do this morning is I would get Dempsey to get me a microphone, and I would go around and we'd pass the microphone around and we can talk about what tempts us. Y'all don't think that's a good idea? Well, I don't either because eventually it'd get to hoppy and we hadn't got that kind of time. <laughs> See, we're all familiar with temptation. It's part of being human. It's part of what makes us human. And, and, and we're in a struggle, folks. We, we, are, we are caught in the midst of a struggle between good and evil. We are caught there. And the devil would like nothing more than to trip us up. We, we are tempted and tried. And it, it brings us to the point where we don't really know what to do as Christians. And today I want to kind of help you understand what you can do. Jesus had gone out into the wilderness to fast and pray, to prepare himself for the ministry that he was about to start. And he had gone out there, and he was coming back home, coming back in to begin his ministry, and he was tried by the devil. The first time the devil came up and said, turn these stones into bread. Well, in Israel, out in the wilderness, out near the mountains that, that we were near, there, was a, there were stones that looked like bread, like the bread that we use for communion. They were kind of oval-shaped pieces of, of, of stone. And they look like bread. And I thought, that must be what the devil showed Jesus. And so they, they, he shows him these, these stones and says, turn these stones to bread. Now, Satan is not going to tempt you with something that you don't want. That just makes sense, doesn't it? What Satan is going to do to us is tempt us with the things that we do want. The things that we 
covet and the things that we envy our neighbor for, that's the things that God, that, uh, excuse me, don't mean to say that, that, that the devil is going to tempt us with. The things that, that are out there that we want, that we crave, but we know that we shouldn't do. He calls us to do these things. He tempts us. He shows them to us. The devil will write, will give you a blank check. Fill it out. However much you want, whatever you want to do, go do it. The problem is, you got to pay it back. One day it comes due and the devil comes and says, it's time. Y'all remember the Twilight Zone? Remember, I love Twilight Zone. Uh, and I love the Tower of Terror in Disney World. And you like that? Yeah. Yeah, we, I, I like the Tower of Terror. Um, but one of the Disney World, uh, excuse me, Disney World, got that on my brain now. One of the Twilight Zone um, episodes, this guy sells his soul to the devil. And he won't, the, the devil says, you won't die. Whatever you do, you won't die. So he jumps off buildings. He gets hit by buses and all of this stuff. But he got tired of his wife fussing at him. And he throws his wife out the window. And he is accused of murder. And he is put in jail, in prison for life. That's kind of ironic, isn't it? You'll live forever. And there you're going to live in the jail, in prison. You've got to pay the piper. That's what it basically boils down to. Eventually, you've got to pay the piper. And what Jesus says is wonderful. He quotes the scripture. You see, Jesus went out to prepare himself for his ministry, and this was the first part of his ministry. He prepared himself for what was to come. He knew the temptations were out there. He knew. But he tried to prepare himself. I have a friend that's a Delta pilot. And uh, he was taking a, a lay speaker's course. And I was uh, uh, teaching the, the section on preaching. And in that each person in the course has to make a five-minute sermon. Well, let me just tell you, um, five minutes is tough to try to preach a sermon. Uh, and you, a, a Methodist preacher just can't do that. Um, you, you can do a devotion maybe, but, but a five-minute sermon is just hard to do. And, and so he got up and he began to talk about what it meant to be a pilot. He said, now, he asked this question, would you, when we're in the air at 50,000 feet and something goes wrong with the airplane, do you want me to stop and pray or to take action? Well, that's kind of a no-brainer. He said, what you don't see is before we go into the air, the, the, me, the pilot, walking around and checking everything and praying that God will give us a safe journey. We prepare before the temptation comes. Jesus went out and fasted. Now this is Lent, and many of you have, have given up something. You are fasting from something for Lent, whether it be social media or candy or coffee or, or something like that. You're fasting. I remember uh, one time we, we were having a, our children's meeting um, one afternoon, and, and they asked me to come over and, and give a devotion. And um, after it was over with, it was during Lent, after it was it just, it was the, right after Ash Wednesday the next week. And the, the host for the, for the hostess for the day had fixed these real nice chocolate cupcakes. Chocolate cupcakes with chocolate icing. Mmm. 
Well, what we didn't count on was a lot of the kids have given up sweets for Lent. So she had, out of about 12 or 15 brown, uh, um, cupcakes, she had about 10 left. And I had to eat part of those so they wouldn't go to waste. <laughs> you know the best way to keep a pie or a cake from, from, from going bad is to eat it as quick as you can. And that way it doesn't go bad on you. But we, we fast in, in, as a symbol to remember the temptation of God and to remember His suffering. He prepared Himself by going into the desert to pray. Jesus tells us to go into our room and, 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 and pray where no one can see us in secret. He, pray, he tells us to go there and and pray and prepare our hearts for what is to come. He says, man does not live by bread alone, but by the very words that come from the mouth of God. He quotes scripture. And now, listen guys, if we're going to use this book, you're all agreed that this is the guide book for us, right? This is the rule book for us. It's what we use to run our church. It's what we, live, what we use to live by. So why don't we study it more than we do? We need to read it. We need to read it. And be familiar with it. There, there are people who read the Bible, read through the Bible every year. And some of you have done that. Find you a translation that you like, that you think is easy to read, and read through it. Just read through the Bible. A couple of chapters every day. Just take your time. You don't have to speed through it. And when you get to the begats and, and all that stuff, just kind of skim that. You don't have to, you don't have to, you, you're not going to remember all that stuff. Scripture. Use the scripture. He does it three times. Satan takes him up to, a, uh, to the top of the temple. And he says, throw yourself off the temple. And the angels will come and save you. Jesus did not have to die on the cross. Jesus did not have to go for the suffering that he went through. All he had to do was to call the angels to come and they would have taken care of him and removed him from that situation and, 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 and maybe slaughtered the Romans who were trying to kill him. But he didn't do that. He said, can't do that. He didn't have to go. He didn't have to be nailed to the cross for us. He didn't have to do all those things. He said, do not put your Lord, the Lord your God to the test. Don't tempt God. Don't tempt God. And then Satan took him to a high mountain. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. All the riches and the glory and the gold and, and all, of the, all of the people of the world in subjugation. And he says, worship me. Bow down and worship me and I'll give you all of this that belongs to me. I'll give it to you. All you have to do is worship me. Tempting, isn't it? Tempting. To have all that power and not have to go and suffer upon the cross. But Jesus says, it is written, 
says, Away with you, Satan. It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And the devil left him. And Luke says, The devil left him for a more opportune time. He didn't give up. He never gave up. When we are in situations where we're going to be tempted, and being tempted, y'all, is not a sin. Being tempted is not a sin. It's giving in to temptation. That's the sin. It's where the sin comes in. Prepare your hearts. If you're prepared beforehand, before... The temptation comes. You'll be able to withstand it. Pray. Fast. Read the scriptures. Take it into your heart. Jesus quoted the scriptures to best the devil. Read the scriptures. Immerse yourself in them and study. Let us pray. Gracious and everlasting God, be with us now. And bless us that we may go into the world aware that your spirit leads us, guides us, and protects us from all temptation. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.